Mike Freer, MP, Shalom, and thank you very much for speaking to me. My pleasure. So you've been an MP for the past 14 years. You've been representing Golders Green and Finchley, both known for a, a very large Jewish community, among other things. And you yourself are not Jewish, but because of your support for the Jewish community and Israel, the, um, so to speak, anti-Semitic threats started quite early on in your career, right? So the first time um, was a serious threat. It was about 2011, an organization called Muslims Against Crusades. Um, it's now a banned group, and uh, a couple of the ringleaders have been in and out of prison for a variety of offenses. Um, but prior to the threat to me, um, Stephen Timms, a Labour member of Parliament, had been stabbed by a young woman who'd been radicalised. Uh, and then I had always been uh, in, involved in interfaith work. And so when I became the MP, I decided I would take my vice surgeries, as we call them, out and about. So I did them um, in the North Finchley Mosque um, without um, any problems. And on this occasion, on their website, there was a picture of me telling me basically not to go to the mosque. It was a no-go area. And I, that let Stephen Timms be a pointed reminder, um, which is a rather unsubtle way of saying they were going to come to the mosque. And uh, they're obviously threatening to stab me. And then during the uh, advice surgery, I was talking to a resident and they burst through and started abusing me, calling me a Jewish homosexual pig. Um, I was then escorted into a room for my safety. Uh, and then from that on, I was uh, kept under a watchful gaze of one of our counterterrorism units who didn't really regard this as a major threat to me, although they did come back at a future surgery, but the police were there this time, and it was just a demonstration and abuse outside. So that was about 2011. That was the first time I feel like it could have, uh, it could have turned fatal. You're saying that it wasn't regarded as a serious threat. Why is that? Because I have to say it sounds pretty serious to me. It, it, it felt like a bit of a, a one-off, um, because other than that, like every MP, you get, you know, you get people with mental health issues, you get just the abusive emails, or you get, um, you know, your office vandalised. That's kind of par for the course, sadly, these days. And that seemed a rather, the Muslims Against Crusades seemed to be a bit of a um, random uh, perhaps a one-off. Yeah, but it wasn't a one-off, and it wasn't only death threats that you were receiving, because you discovered that you were actually a target for a murderer, a person that killed another MP, David Amos, and initially wanted to kill you. Um, I got a call from, again, the counterterrorism unit uh, shortly after they'd arrested the man that, when, that had killed David Amos, and it turns out that he'd come up to my office several times um, to do some surveillance. And on the uh, 17th of September, 21, he'd come armed with the intention of harming me, as he put it. Uh, luckily, the night before, um, I'd been moved by then Prime Minister Johnson into a different role. So instead of being in Finchley, um, I got moved to the Department of Trade. So I decided to come into Westminster. Otherwise, I'd have been in Finchley as normal. After that point, I, I got a much more level of security. My home was basically rebuilt. The office was basically rebuilt. Um, and I decided to start wearing a stab vests if I was doing an event where my, uh, if like my presence was was known in advance. My home has had new windows which are strengthened. My front door has been strengthened. My letterbox had already been sealed up. Um, I had panic buttons in every room. That's when my level of anxiety went up, and certainly the anxiety for my husband uh, went significantly. Uh, it, it increased significantly. And while facing these uh, serious threats and security issues, you continued showing your support for Israel after the October 7th attack. Last December, your office was targeted in an arson attack. It was completely burned down. I know that there's an ongoing investigation. What can you tell me about that? Two individuals have been arrested. They're in prison awaiting trial. Uh, we have to be careful what we say because it's a, a, a live uh, case. Um, but so far, the two individuals have not spoken about their motive. They've not given evidence yet. They've certainly not said anything as to why they targeted me. And then my husband said, you're done. That's it. Um, I'm not prepared to keep worrying if uh, you know, someone around the corner is going to attack you. I can't say I blame him, to be honest. But, you know, I wonder, uh, being in the center of 
such high volume threats throughout the past few years. Have you noticed any change in the atmosphere towards you or towards your colleagues since October 7th as uh, the level of threats or the aggression changed in any way? The inbox is very, you know, of emails is very polarized. There's no nuance. You can't have a rational discussion. People can legitimately criticize Israel. That's quite legitimate. I'm a friend of Israel. It doesn't mean I have to agree with everything the Israeli government does. You know, friends are there to tell our friends when they think they've got it wrong. That's quite acceptable. What's happening at the moment is you can't have a debate. There's no, say, there's no discussion. If you're supporting Israel's right to defend itself, then you are clearly a genocidal baby killer. Um, so, and there's nothing in between. And so if you support Israel's right to defend itself and eradicate Hamas, then clearly you are signing up to the complete destruction of Palestine and you know, thousands of people killed. Now, most of us understand that war is an ugly business. And you can't go back to it and say, OK, let's have a ceasefire. And then what? And then what? And if you're saying a ceasefire allows Hamas to regroup and rearm or allows Hamas to continue firing missiles, or wants to uh, repeat the 710 massacres, is that the price you're willing to pay for a ceasefire? And of course, you can't have that, if you like, that debate about what a ceasefire actually means. You're either one or the other, and it's black or white. And because of that, you, you find that the level of uh, at demonstrations, there's no ability to engage. It is literally you're being shouted down, you're being intimidated to change your views. Uh, and that's the bit that has changed. That level of intimidation has gone up. The level of aggression has gone up. Um, we've seen on the marches, people are, are saying things and doing things that are illegal. And in my view, the police have been too slow to react. Mm, in, in what way? My local police have been amazing with me. But on the dem- I, one of the things I, I've said has to change is if you break the law, you need visible deterrent. People need to see you being arrested on the spot, not just the other marchers, but people who are watching on television or in the newspaper need to see uh, photographs of people being arrested. Because at the moment, it is seen that they're getting away with it. And that just breeds other people thinking they can get get away with it too. You said that your husband gave you uh, some sort of an ultimatum, telling you, uh, that's it, you're done after the arson attack on your office. How hard was it to reach a decision to step down in the next election because of the threats that you were uh, receiving, because you feel fearful for your life and the lives of your loved ones? Very hard. Um, Let's say there were some uh, tense discussions at home um, in terms of whether it was the right thing to do. Clearly, I accept some criticism that in some ways I've allowed them to win by stepping aside as a member of parliament at next election. I'm not stepping aside from the Jewish community and I'm not stepping aside from Israel. I just have to find another platform. And in some ways, as a member of parliament, um, I accept the risks to a point. Um, I sign up for it to a point, but my husband doesn't, my family doesn't. And so that's why um, it's not fair on them that I continue. Yeah, these are uh, sad, sad times when a democratically elected member of parliament has to step down because he doesn't feel safe, uh, regardless of his views and beliefs. Mike Freer, MP, thank you very much for speaking to me. Thank you.